Welcome everybody to my first video about mobile app development in 2021, how to create a multi-platform app for iOS, Android and Windows uh, for complete beginners from A to Z, from installation to deployment, from the beginning till the end. Because when I started as a developer, I always was looking for uh, tutorials to just make a small app, but just teach me also how to install the stuff and how to deploy it so from start to end and then afterwards get into the nitty-gritty of making a real diverse app well this first video is about installation it's about creation creating a project and about uh, deploying so you can send it to somebody and somebody can install it first let's concentrate on the installation we will need uh, visual studio 2019 or the preview uh, 2022 because it's the application by which you can uh, create mobile apps. Inside of this application, the Visual Studio, we will have to install Xamarin. And Xamarin uh, will make sure that you will have all the mobile components for your app creation. So we'll need two things in the installation phase. It's the Visual Studio and then install with it the mobile components, which is Xamarin. And when all that's installed, well, you're good to go. And you can go on to chapter two, create your project. You can immediately like test it on the simulator. Then you can change some code to make it your own. And afterwards, you can create an, uh, an APK that you can send to anybody that has an Android phone or tablet. Um, you can create an, uh, a Windows uh, application that people can uh, have on their phone, on the tablet or on their desktop. Um, or you can deploy it for iOS, but iOS will um, it will have some extra steps. So we'll be doing that uh, tutorial in the next lesson. Well, uh, without further ado, let's begin with the installation. So why are we uh, installing Visual Studio? Well, it's because it's the application that we need to create the mobile apps. So we go to docsmicrosoft.com. And we go to the Get Started for Xamarin. Uh, they also say we'll need to have Visual Studio 2019. Um, if I'm right, you can just you can just click it here. I already have it open. Excuse me. So there's mul multiple versions of uh, Visual Studio. We'll have the community, the professional, and the enterprise. Uh, the free one is the community version, and that will be enough for you. So download this and install it, um, but when you install it, make sure that when you install, you select that you want the mobile development with .NET. And the mobile development.net is this, uh, this tile over here, and you will be sure to have Xamarin installed inside of your Visual Studio uh, application. And then you will get a screen like this. It will be installing, it will take some time. You can take a coffee, and afterwards, you can launch your application. So then we'll have Visual Studio installed. And then we'll have also have Xamarin installed, which provides the mobile development component for Visual Studio. And then we can move on to the creation. So the first thing we're going to do is create a project. Second thing is we're going to test this project on the simulator or on Windows, or Android or iOS. And the third thing will be, we'll change some code and then we'll create an APK. And that's an APK, it's an install file that you can send to somebody who has an Android phone. But first, let's just create a project. So I'm starting my Visual Studio 2019. It's handy to just uh, run it as an administrator because sometimes it will need to change some Windows configuration to make sure that your simulators are running correctly. So here we are, it will look like this. Um, I already have some um, projects here, but what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new project. So let's click that. Um, right now we got a list with a lot of things that we can create. That's because Visual Studio is not only made to create mobile applications, but it's also made to make cloud applications or uh, desktop applications or console applications, uh, ASP.NET websites. 
but we're looking for mobile. And then we'll get the option to choose mobile app in the form of xamarin.forms. That means uh, we're using one code language uh, to create for all the platforms. Um, and the UI will be shared, so it will look the same everywhere. So you design one interface and it looks a little bit different on different platforms, but you will have one code base. So it's super simple, it's super easy to maintain. The updates are getting better and better, and this is a really, really nice open source initiative from uh, Microsoft. Um, so right now we're going to choose mobile app Xamarin Forms, and it will create a multi-project template for building apps for iOS, Android, uh, and also Windows, it doesn't say here, but it is here. We'll click Next. We'll call this uh, first app. Then you can select the location. I'll just I'll place my solution and project in the same directory. That's okay. Then we'll have some presets. So you can choose to either already have uh, an app with a flyout menu that will look like that, and it also has an uh, the tab bar, if you want it, you can also disable it. You can also say, I do not want the flyout menu, I just want the tab bar. Let's just get this verification out of the way. Um, so you can also have just a tab bar, but you also can start from a blank uh, application and you will just get one screen. Let's just take this one. So here it asks you to, if you plan to develop for Android, iOS or UWP, I like to also um, develop for UWP, also because when you develop and you use the simulators, the Windows simulator will be the fastest to uh, start up and uh, to debug on. So now it's creating the project. We've chosen a blank app, so we'll just get one page, but we'll do some, uh, some building, some configuration. This is your output window. Um, you will mainly be working from this window, but right now there's nothing here. Let's just go through the, um, the solution setup here on the right. So what we see here is the solution explorer, and it's basically uh, showing you the, the content of your project. So we've created a project folder on our C drive that's called I just did it in dev and I called this first app. So inside my first app, I'll have my first app project. That's this one. Then I'll have my first app Android. Well, this is my Android app. Then I have my iOS app that's here. And then I have my w, UWP app, Universal Windows app. And all this is shown because this is opened and the SLN uh, file type, it means solution. So right now, this is called a solution. It says here also solution first app, and it will show uh, me different projects. And those are the folders that I just showed you. So from the from the bed, we'll see that the UWP is selected because it's, uh, uh, how do you say, it's bold. Uh, I can also select something else. I can say uh, right click on Android. Then I can go to set a startup project. Now, if I will uh, press play to see how this looks like on an emulator, it will show me an Android emulator. If I say I want, I want a UWP to be the starter project, I will be able to simulate this on my local machine. So these are the three uh, different uh, projects that compile for the specific platform, but they all share the same C-sharp code we have here in the first app uh, project. Yeah, so if I work from this app, if I just expand it, if I work from here, then it will work on all these projects. And if I have to do something specific in the project, like only for iOS, I want something different, then I can do it inside of these projects. But if I just want the same functionality, and if I just want the same kind of UI, I can just work in this uh, shared uh, project for all uh, the platforms. What do we see when we look at this shared project? Well, 
we have some dependencies. The dependencies are like the the components that uh, the app is compiled with. That's just good to know. It's all there, and we can put some different NuGet packages in there whenever we want. But it's of no concern right now. Just forget all about that. All we need to know is we've got the app.saml, and we have the main page.saml. So the app.saml is where the lifecycle of your multi-platform application is being held. So when I say lifecycle, I mean like when the app starts, uh, when the app goes to sleep, uh, when the app reloads, uh, when the app gets a uh, notification. So all that is in the app.saml. So the XAML actually is something of a front end. But it also has a back end. So when we expand this right here, we can go to the back end of the app.saml. And we call this the code behind. So we have our front end, and then we have our code behind. And if we double tap the code behind, let's say we start the simulator, uh, with, we start the application uh, on the simulator. Then the first thing that will be called will be the uh, the constructor of the app. It will initialize the components, and this initialization of components will make sure that whatever we're choosing here, uh, the platform will initialize its components. And after that, we will just create a main page. And this main page already exists here, because it says, uh, let's create a new main page, and it's blue because um, if it's blue, I don't know, I'm a little bit colorblind, actually. Is it green? I don't know. So it's green or blue, but anyway, it's colored, and that's because the main page um, already exists. So if you go to the right here, you'll see that we have a main page .saml. So when the app starts, it initializes some components that it needs to create uh, the mobile application. And then as the, as the main page, it will set an, the main page. Yeah, so the app has a main page that will be shown to you. And we say, let's create a new one and we'll put it in there. When we want to see what's in this main page, then we'll just have to um, double click the main page to see. Uh, the main page that SAML uh, will show us the front end of the page. And it will show you all kind of stuff, and it might be a bit intimidating. But when I show this on the uh, UWP simulator, you will see that it's not that scary. Uh, so I'm going to run this. I have se selected my UWP as the starter project, and then I will I will play it on my local machine. Then here in the output window, it will it will show me some uh, some uh, build output. So if something goes wrong or there are errors, I can see it here. Right now it's building. I will make this a little bit smaller, like this. And now I will make this a little bit bigger so you can all see this. Now we will see our main page. So because we selected uh, a blank page a preset to start from. It has already given us one page to start with, and it has already filled in some of the information in there. So, for example, uh, there's a frame. Now let's just start from the top to the bottom. So actually, this you can just look over it. This is not really important. The real layout of the content page is what is between. So, between we see that we start with a stack layout. And a stack layout just says, says uh, I'm going to stack stuff on top of each other. So if I put a lot of controls in here, it will put it vertically on top of each other. Uh, unless I say I want this to be uh, horizontally. So I can say my orientation is uh, horizontal. While you're typing here or changing the UI, you will instantly see it in your interface. And it's really, really helpful because you don't have to stop 
and rebuild all the time. A really nice advantage that Xamarin Forms has over other uh, mobile platform development. Um, so we can change this orientation. If you haven't, uh, so so earlier when, when it, it didn't show anything, it was vertical because it defaults to vertical. So I can put it here or I can take it away. Either way, it's just vertical. So what we saw was that it puts uh, it puts a frame on the top, and the background color is uh, this uh, hex color. But we can also just type here like blue, or we can say it's uh, it's red. You will see a change here, and we don't want this welcome message. We just want to say welcome to my first app and we might just want to make this a little bit oh no that's not that's not nice like light blue or something yes or teal is that something yeah teal we'll take teal so we have a frame we have changed the background color uh, there is some padding on here. The padding says uh, there's some distance between um, between the side and where the uh, the content starts. So if I put this to zero, it will not it will not have some some uh, some um, padding around uh, the content. If I put it back to 24, we'll see we'll, we have some padding around here. And you can play with it to, make, to, to see what, what works for you. The coin radius is zero. And we can say, let's say it's 100. Then it will have a coin radius of 100. It can be 50. It can be 20. It can be whatever you like. Let's keep it, uh, I don't know, like 5 or something. 50. 25. Let's go with 25. And we want it, let's say we don't want it to start uh, against the, the side of the screen and the top. We want it to start like five pixels from there. Then we can say uh, we also have a margin. The margin can help you um, put it away from the from the borders. And we can also say this 15. Maybe that's better. Yeah. So we have some space around it. I like it. And it can breathe. I don't know. We're just changing something so we can have our first app. As long as we change something, it's your first app. So we can change the, the text color. We can make this yellow if we want. Or, uh, or red. Or Alice blue. But I think we'll just keep it white. I like it white. So that was our frame. So the top we just uh, changed is the frame. And below there, there's the label that says start developing now. It's this label, or you can say uh, you can say something else here. You can say uh, I've started developing apps. And it says something about the font size. If you clear this, then you can get some options. Let's clear this, say is. So here we have some options. If you say title, then it will uh, be a little bit bigger. If we say caption, then it will be a little bit smaller here. And this will scale with the user preferences. So it's a good thing to use the, the font sizes that are given instead of just making your own font size like uh, 36 or something. So that's this label. Let's just say here, um, this is my first multi-platform app. And I'm about to deploy it. So you can run it on your phone or phone, tablet or desktop. Right, well below there's uh, there's a link to learn more. Um, let's just say we want to delete this uh, label, right? So we'll just take it away. We see it disappear here. Let's say we want to create something of our own, like a button or something. So we can do uh, 
button. And then we'll say we'll put some text there. And the text will be uh, click me. And so this button has a clicked uh, command, but it also has a clicked event. So for beginners, the easiest thing to use is the clicked event, because when we create a, click, a clicked event, it will automatically uh, create some code for us for in the code behind. So if I press tab right here on the clicked event, and then I'll say, yes, I want an, uh, a new event handler. And so I can uh, do something with the button click. So I'll say enter. It has created a button clicked event. I'll just have to uh, say this is the end of my button. So I'll say slash, and then it automatically ends the, the button tag for me. So right now we'll have a button on the right size, and it also has a hoover. Uh, on mobile, of course, it doesn't have a hoover because you just press it. It does have a pressed uh, state. And we can say maybe we want to change, uh, I know, the background color to, to, to just now I have the same kind of style and maybe you want the text color to be white and maybe you want to have the font attributes or the font size to be caption or body maybe body is better and maybe we want the corner radius to be 25 also Let's just say we've created our um, our button like this. Maybe a margin because it's too close to the sides. Uh, let's say the margin is uh, 50 or something. Then we'll just have to, its own space right here. And maybe the font way. I like it to have uh, a bolt. It's bolt like this, and then maybe some bigger um, font size. So what do we have here? Font size is uh, large maybe. Well, it's really large, so let's just, let's just stay small. Yeah, let's keep it like this. All right, so now when we click it, there's nothing happening. And that's because we have made a, a clicked event uh, that is called button uh, underscore clicked but there's no code to it yet. So let's write some code to it, and then we will have our first application. So I'm going to stop running right now. We have our main page SAML. Um, we have our frame, our label, a label, and the button that we created ourselves. We also have the clicked event, and we the, the system asked us to make a, a button clicked event, and we said, okay, let's go. So right now you can click here and press uh, F12 to go to the code behind and go to the uh, code that happens when you click the button. Or you can just say, so right now we're in our main SAML, so we search for it in our solution. Then we go to the code behind. That's called uh, the SAML.cs. Then we double click it. Right now we are in the code behind of our page. And we'll just have two things here. We have our main page, it's part of a content page. And then inside, uh, there's this constructor that initializes our components. Well, they, that just makes sure that we're seeing stuff on the screen. We don't have to worry about it. And this is what we created ourselves, or actually what the system created for us. It's this button clicked event. And this is exactly the same as what we have here. It's the button clicked. And also, if I press F12 here, we'll go directly into this code. So when somebody clicks on that button, this code will go off. And if we just want to do something here, like um, let's say we just want to uh, show a alert uh, in these applications, there's some standard libraries in installed that can do stuff for you. And one of the things it can do is show you an alert, and it's really, really easy. We can say this display alert. So we're just telling this 
we're saying this page should display an alert and this already exists. That's why it was already typing it for me right here. We're displaying an alert and we can see here that when we display an alert, we need to have a title, we need to have a message and we need to have a cancel button. So like we can say, um, you clicked a button. Uh, this is the information inside of the button, uh, inside of the alert. And the cancel button can be OK or uh, all right or I read it or cancel. I don't, I don't know. So let's just say we're going to display an alert. Then we're going to need to add the title, the message uh, and the cancel button. So to give this uh, method some information with it, we'll have to use the I don't know how you call it in English. The, so you have to use this character, right? The open and the close uh, thingies. And at the end of each uh, code line in C sharp, you have to put the, uh, the dot and the comma to say I've ended this piece of code. Well, right now it's still uh, red underlined and that's because we have not provided it with a title, a message and a cancel uh, string inside of here. So if you want to display something to the, uh, to the user, we'll have to first give it a uh, title, a message, and then a cancel. And they have all have to be separated with a comma. See, that's what it says here, a comma. Um, so let's just say, my title is uh, you clicked me and let's just say the message is um, have you subscribed yet and let's say the um, cancel button is no but I will, let's just say it would be something like this. You can see it's all red scribbled. And that's not because you've had some bad writing or some, uh, some errors there, but it's because the application does not know that you are passing it a text. So for passing text, we have something really specific. We call it strings in, in, in programming language. And to make sure that you give a string, to a method like this uh, display alert, it will, it says here also, it needs a string title, a string message and a string cancel. So the thing that we give here should be a string. And the way to say this is a string, we'll just use the double quotation. So if you put a double quotation here, okay, so let's just put this inside of the double quotation. Now you will see that it does not have any red scribbles under it. We can do the same for no. No, but I will. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Here. So, sorry that took some time. Right now, when somebody clicks the button, we will show this person uh, an alert. This display alert has a title, you've clicked me. It has a message, have you subscribed yet? And it has a cancel button, no, but I will. So the cancel button just makes sure that the message goes away. So let's test it. Uh, let's put it here. Let's just first run it. Let's put this here, let's make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so right now we're seeing the main page SAML. We're seeing the stack layout, we're seeing the button. And when I press the button, it's going, going to go to the button click method. The button click met method will show me an alert and the title will be you've clicked me. The message will be have you subscribed yet, subscribed yet. Cancel button will be no, but I will. So let's click it and we're seeing our uh, 
our display alert. And now we can press this button and then we will cancel this box and it will go away. And we can click it again. So right now you've created your first project. Uh, you've uh, changed some of the UI in the SAML. You've um, created a button and you've created a button clicked event in the code behind of the page. Uh, and you have displayed a message. So for your first app, you have done really, really well. And this app can also run on Android. We can say, let's say we select the Android application. Uh, we say set a startup project. And right now, if we here uh, press play, then it will show me uh, the application on the Android simulator called the Pixel 3a. But if you haven't installed any simulators yet, then you should uh, Go to your Android device manager, and then you should create a new one. And when you have created a new one, it will look like this. You can just select here one of the presets, like a pixel or something like this, or a tablet, whatever you want to run your application on, and then you press create. And after that, it will take some time to install. Then you can start it. And afterwards, you can say here on the Android project, set a startup project and then you can press play here because it will show you the emulators that you have installed so right now we'll show it on a pixel 3a xl and let's see if it uh, looks any different or looks the same it's going to need some time to start up because uh, deploying on android is a bit more difficult than uh, on uwp so let's just give it some time so right now we have our uh, android application running on our Pixel uh, 3a XL. Um, it says, welcome to my first app. Uh, I've, I've started developing apps. This is my first multi-platform app. And we also have a button here. And if we click it, we will get the Android version of uh, the displaying of an alert. You've clicked me. Have you subscribed yet? No, but I will. I hope you will. So let's say you wanted to create uh, an install file. We call it an, an, an APK and you want to send it to any Android user. Well, uh, one of the important things to know is that all this time we were working in a, a debuggable version. And a debuggable version is said, it's, it's, it's over here. So right now we're in a debug configuration. If we were to release our uh, application for production, then we should put this into release mode. So it will take some time because it's going to switch some uh, some presets uh, and some configuration. Um, and the thing you have to do if you want to create an APK that's installable by other people, you first have to make sure that you're creating an APK. So when we right click on the Android project, we can go to the properties right here. When we press the properties, we have to go to the Android options Ah, right here. So right now, uh, I have APK selected, so that's okay. But if you have something else here selected, like uh, a bundle or something, then you should put it on APK because otherwise you cannot send it to uh, to people. But when you're putting it in the in the Google Play Store, uh, it will be better to uh, choose bundle here. Why? Because the packages that it will install for the different phones and the different tablets, it will be a lot smaller and compacter if you create a, a bundle instead of an APK. So right now we want to create uh, what we call an archive. So we want to um, first uh, build it. We say rebuild and then it will rebuild a, a release version of this one. And we can see uh, what it does here. We can just wait for it. So uh, right now the rebuild has been done and it's succeeded, zero failed. So we can say this is a good application, there are no bugs. Right click here, and then we're going to create an archive because when we create an archive, we, after that process, when we have the archive, we can export it as an APK. So that's the process. You put your debuggable version into release, then you rebuild your application, then you create an archive, and then you export it as an APK. 
So I'm going to archive. It will start archiving right now. And uh, this is quite a long process. So we're just going to wait here and probably I will just fast forward in this video. So right now we have our first app Android version one. Uh, and it's an APK. So right now we want to select uh, distribute. And we do not want to put it on Google Play because we have not created our developers account yet. That will be in another tutorial. Uh, right now we just want to um, export it ad hoc and it just means we'll just have an APK package and we can send it to anybody or we can test it live on our own devices so we can debug it or see how it works in real time. So create ad hoc. Uh, it needs a signing identity. It has to know that it comes from a developer and the person that installs it has to trust you as a developer when giving it to somebody outside of, a, of an application store. So I already made a signing identity. You can create a new one. Uh, you'll just have to remember the, the password. So right now I'm se selecting my signing identity. I say save as and I'll just put it on my desktop. And I'll just say uh, Hans IT because that's my company. Um, and now, and this is my first app. All right, it will output as an APK. I will save it. This will take a little time because ah, this is where it asks for the password. Well. You've remembered yours because I asked you to, so you can fill it in right now. You can press OK. It will sign the APK file and it will be done. So right now, if we go to our uh, desktop, you will see that we have created our first app APK. And this is the file that you can send to anybody with an Android phone through email or well, it's 18.1 MB, so maybe not through email. Um, but you can also just uh, connect your USB-C cable to your Windows machine uh, then have your Android uh, folder pop up and just uh, put this inside of the this file inside of the downloads folder. Then on your Android device, you can go to your downloads folder and it, it will show you installable files and you can install this APK. It will ask you, do you trust this developer? Of course, you trust me, so you press OK. And then you will have it on your device. You can open it, you can press the button and your first application is running. So as a recap, what have we done? We have installed Visual Studio uh, 2019, probably not the preview yet. This will soon be uh, the new one. So we will soon switch to 2022. Uh, we've installed Xamarin. We have created a project. And it was called the Xamarin Forms project. It was for Android, iOS, and Windows. We have tested it on devices. We have tested it on simulators. We have changed some code in the UI. We have changed some background colors. We have uh, changed some text labels. We have changed some text colors. We have changed some font attributes to bold or uh, sizes. Uh, we have played a little bit around with the orientation of the stack layout to make it the orientation vertical or horizontal. We have added uh, a user control, that's a button. We deleted uh, one of the labels. Um, for the button, we have created an event. And inside of that event, we have wrote some code. The code was in the code behind of the main page. So the main page.saml has all the UI codes. The main page.saml.cs had all the code behind. And inside of the code behind, inside of the method uh, that's called when we press the button, the button underscore clicked. Maybe it's better if I show it one more time. So here we created the button. Here we created the clicked event that's called button clicked. Then at the main page, saml.cs, the code behind, we have the button click the event. And when, when somebody presses it, then this code runs and inside we have put a display alert. And a alert have popped up with a title, a message and a cancel button. And yeah, so that was your first application. 
next time um, we're going to we're going to show it on uh, on iOS. We're going to make sure that uh, we can see this in action in the simulator for iOS without using a Mac, so just using Windows and maybe also um, yeah the deployment of uh, of the app to let's say Play Store or the Apple App Store. Or if you have any other ideas of, uh, for our next lesson, let me know. I will read all the comments and um, I will get back to you as soon as possible and try to create the things that you as a community think you should know as beginners for multi-platform applications. All right, thank you. Uh, all the uh, links are in the description below. If you want to subscribe, subscribe, press the bell to get notifications and I will see you soon in our next lesson. Thank you for joining me in my first.